I will begin in a little different way. This is by way of introduction. Uh, we first uh, speak to the mother. Om Anandamai Chaitanyamai Satyamai Parame Om Here in the ashram for us, every Sunday is a Savitri day. Uh, we read the sequence, Savitri. Uh, we read the original in English and then I will talk in Gujarati, you see. And uh, this Sunday also it is synchronized that way that it is a Savitri day. And we record the date also and the time also. So it is a uh, 6 February, is it not? 6 February, 1977, and we are entering into a very important year. The mother's birth centenary will be there, will be, the celebrations will start from the 21st. So, as uh, we were talking, work of a century in the great world. But it is the most difficult work and there won't be crowds for it. But then Sri Aurobindo said that the number does not, does not matter, you see. And uh, those who are here, we are almost the forerunners of the great change that will be there for the humanity. To be very frank, we are crossing over from the human side to the divine side of life. It is as good as that. And uh, it is a challenge and also an invitation for those who can accept it. And uh, a great, uh, great thing has happened on earth, you see, that the problem of problems is solved. And the divine is uh, the greatest problem in a way. What is God, you see? What is man also is a problem, but uh, we do not bother much about it, but about the God and His ways and His methods and they are inscrutable and how the Divine handles His creation, that is that. So now it has so happened that the Divine has given out His secret, you see, and solved many of the problems that the intellectual mind you see, feels. What about this and what about that? And Sri Aurobindo himself, you see, was a great intellect, great intellectual being, and almost the whole problem of earth, you see, got concentrated in him, and uh, he faced with that, what shall we do? He asked the divine, what is to be done with this, you see? And he got the response, you see. The problem was solved for him and for all of us. So, the Divine is a reality, but what type of reality? And is he a living reality or just a name to be worshipped or just God in the Vaikuntha or Kailas and we here are on the plains and forests and so the divine had to take an active hand, you see, in putting Sri Aurobindo on the lines, you see. As we are laboring here, putting democracy on the lines, you see. So it's a very difficult task. So Sri Aurobindo was a political leader, the greatest leader in those days and and he had offered himself for political work out and out. 
But then, you know, he was arrested and taken to the Alipur prison. And there he is just uh, dumbfounded that why I am brought here. My work is there. But uh, by that time he had a living communication with the divine and voices came to him. Not voices, but the voice, which was the divine's voice. And they had a regular exchange also. So when he says, why I am brought here? So then the divine, divine says that the, uh, the, uh, the bondage that you could not break yourself, I have broken it for you. you see. You could not give up politics by your own will, you see. So I have removed you from that and brought you in for my work. And uh, the problem of Indian freedom is solved, you see. So freedom, India will be given its freedom in its own time, but a greater work is there to be done. And my dear friend, come join hands with me. Something like that. Uttar Pala speech, you must have read. So, the, the Divine has uh, it's a, it's a long word, you see, but the lines are clearly established. And that uh, in the ashram is there, the whole literature is there, 30 volumes, and the mother talks also. Whatever we have a, we have a desire to know is there in all those books. Whatever you want to know by mind is there. Worked out. No question is there which is not touched by Sri Aurobindo. The case of materialism, agnostic, what not. Every question. And the occult questions also are tackled by the mother, as we know. And the the supreme embodiment of Sri Aurobindo is in Savitri. He, as we know, he started as a poet. He was writing poetry in England in his teens. And he went on writing and politics came to him later on. Yoga came still a little more later. But the poetry, the word was there with him. And uh, it has culminated into Savitri. That is, in short, how Sri Aurobindo stands with literature. Philosophy also came to him. But uh, still, a greater work was there. So, how the divine reality was translating itself into the human reality. So, in that process, Savitri is there. He has been writing and writing, rewriting again and again. And as you know, we have been working throughout the nights for years, you see. For, for them, nights are not nights, you see. It is the most, uh, most significant uh, very, very deep working. So, you, you must have heard that talk the uh, young man had with him mother about Savitri. That Sri Aurobindo would be writing Savitri in the night and would read it out to the mother in the morning. But then the mother found that whatever Sri Aurobindo had written in the Savitri during the night was actually pa passing through her experience. She was going through the same experience that was put here. You see. So it was a greater action that he writes here and it actually materializes through the mother. So Savitri is a materialization, an embodiment of the work that is going on there. And uh, they, they, they say that our work has been the most difficult work. And uh, it is not a bed of roses, but we have to cut through forests and build roads and undergo every possible difficulty on earth so that it can be material. 
So at the end of this struggle, the victory was there. 24th November, that is the day of realization. So the victory was there in the sense that uh, the relation of the divine and his action with the human was established. How the relation can be established? That was worked out on 24th November. And uh, this is our yoga or this is our work that transcends the physical. It doesn't remain simply physical. The physical and the supra-physical, they are all joined hands here. So there are many things that are vocal or mystical and uh, as uh, we know, on the 24th November, these dates are very significant. 15th, 21st, 24th, you see. So on that day, there were exactly 24 persons. So it is synchronizing. And what happened that uh, it was the descent into Sri Aurobindo's physical, his body of the divine consciousness. And as he has, he has stated it, and it is a still more delightful thing to us, that what is this divine consciousness? That is the divine consciousness as it was embodied, or it is embodied as Sri Krishna. That is, he says, my Guru is Sri Krishna, none else, you see. Not Rama or Shiva or this or that, all these are there. But it was Sri Krishna who has given me this yoga. He has given me the complete realization of the Gita. He is perhaps the only man who can say that I have passed to the complete realization of the Gita. We have great commentators and pundits and what does the Gita mean? This, this or Bhakti or Yoga or Gyan or... But he says, I was given a complete realization of the Gita. So Sri Krishna has made Sri Krishna the incarnate Gita. And he says a further work awaits us. So whatever is said in the Gita is to be further, you see, taken further through spiritual experience. Gita does not exhaust all the spiritual experience. It just indicates the beginning, what can happen, you see. So the rest is to be worked out in spiritual ex- ex- experience. So that is what the work, you see, that is the work that was carried on further, you see, after the realization. So the ashram was started and uh, things were arranged and uh, as you know, he said that I will give my yoga only through the mother, you see. That is the arrangement. So the, the arrangement is done when the yoga is given. But only through the mother you can receive my yoga. So something like a, a bomb for many years. Just a lady and she is giving the yoga. Yes, but Sri Aurobindo says, and you have to find out whether this lady can give you the yoga. That was a struggle for the ashramites also. Well, whether the mother can give us the yoga, but it is a fact that she can and she. So the ashram, the mother and all of us and all these activities and the centers are developing and people are coming and the work has been established and it is growing. And what is that? It is the Divine Presence. On earth, the Divine Presence is there. And it is creating its centers of work. It first established itself or manifested itself at Pondicherry and through there, not through there, but from, from its own plane, it is now developing and organizing itself all over the earth. So it is not just a horizontal movement, 
the vertical movement. So as the yoga came to Sri Aurobindo from the above, you see, he was in the jail. He, he was uh, in the bank of Narmada or he was in the Kashmir, you see, hill. Things were coming to him from the above, you see. So it is in the same way, everywhere things are coming from the above, you see. And uh, it is received according to the preparedness of the people or the place, you see. Then the first experience is of a presence, you see, that an influence had reached the mortal plane, it is, as it is said. Our plane is there and we feel that something is coming down, you see, enveloping us. So that is the first feeling or experience we have when we reach the ashram. People do not enter a compound. You feel that there is a some presence is there. Something different is there. We cannot define. But something something unique is there which we have not come across so far. You do not question it. You cannot question it what is there. You are simply taken inside as a mother just takes a child in its arms. We are simply taken in. You enter then and move about from place to place and at every spot there is a different action also. So people go there and stand here and stand there and move about and... So there are so many points where, where a distinct uh, action is there. So everything is there in this divine presence. And we meet further the divine in action. What does the presence mean? How it is working further, you see. And that is that the, the change that is to be worked out, you see. As in the talk, we said, the external man has to be changed. And along with that or before that, the man has to meet the divine. They feel the divine and uh, get the divine into the life. Translate that experience into reality. So this is work. This is not simply going into nirvana. That is it. Nirvana is there. So other yogas are there. They can take you to peace. Take you to realization. But leave. They leave it. To leave you at that only. Nothing further. You merge into the divine. The problem is solved in a way. In the old way. But now it is not that. Now after this liberation, this identification with the divine, the whole creation is there, you see. So what is to be done with the whole life? So the mother used to say, you don't, you should not come here for peace. If you want peace, you can go to the Himalayas or you can go to the go to Ramana Maharshi. You will get the peace. But here the work is there. And uh, that is a that is a very solid work. Sri Aurobindo said that it has taken me fourteen years to establish peace. You may enter into peace, you may get peace, you stay that way. But here the peace is established, which has taken him fourteen years. So you have not to work for peace, you enter into peace. So now how this work is going on? So it is it is tackling the whole human nature. So the mother has put work for us, you see. That you can progress through meditation, but still more through work. You see. And work not in the normal way way but work arranged in the divine way. Work that is part of the divine working. Where not our human will is working, but the divine will is working. We have, we have put aside the human will, you see. And we are allowing the divine will to work their work. And that is the position we accept in this yoga. That is the, the surrender. It's a very simple word. We put everything in the mother's hands and things are decided by her. 
but uh, that divine will is not an not an autocrat or not a dictator it dictates but rarely rather it allows us to get into the divine will to understand to follow and accept it so the divine does not dictate it leads but it does not dictate so there is always an indication what is to be done but there are no orders so the work is allowed to take shape in our conscious it is decided the press will be there you see but how the press is to be there printing press it is left to us you see. formerly there used to be a register for the ashram sadhak also there are employees and lot of us people our sadhak also there there used to be a register when they enter when they leave it is entered there then i find that uh, that register is removed by the mother no more taking note of where is sadhak something how much he stays in the press how much he works when does he work whether he sleeps or just puts it there this is the sadhak must know what is to be done they are supposed to know so that way the work is is uh, left to grow in us and then you feel your responsibility much more and then what work is to be done through us we make the discovery how we shall progress and there the whole question of changing the external man external nature you external person that whole question it's a running question the night and day and the all the intricacies of human life human relations uh, human approaches every everything is taken piece by piece and the counter divine counterpart is given to you so it is not a, just a small thing you see there was a friend from gujarat one of our great writers i want to be there in the ashram Uh, in for six months and attain peace of mind i say you cannot do that in six months peace of mind is this is not a just a temporary work or just a it, it requires a whole lifetime the only thing is that uh, you have to see that uh, there is a change over you see from the normal condition we go over to the higher condition and when you accept that whatever work we may be doing either in the ashram or outside here it becomes a part a continuous work so for all of us also the point will be that whether that change over has taken place whether have we have crossed the border definitely or whether we are just feeling oh this is something nice let us do it let us do it but uh, as we are talking the earth in the morning is there any initiation in this work so there is no external initiation but there is a inner initiation where you you do feel that oh the old, old things are put aside and we are entering into a new phase of our life and then the the external activities they will be organized according to the possibility and each one of us will be doing the work that is meant for us how the day in the great great change on earth a new race a divine race of people of the higher consciousness that will be a long program and it will be organized and it will be materialized so in the bang in bangalore itself you see miracles are taking place as you see just that other place you see there is smaller room than this you see and the room that was there was just enough to accommodate these two large photographs and after all the running through the bangalore so uh, streets i reached there and as i entered that room a terrific concentration was there you see it that the presence is there and it is a concentration that something is coming down you see and all the smaller or the the external questions are there the range the place based on that but now here i here 
I say, we have another place. My friend brought me here. We have a broader place. It is something like a step further, you see, and a much happier place. And the photos also have a great accommodation. The divine is not cramped, you see. He can, he can extend his arms like that, you see. <laughs> he can put his hand uh, somewhere, you see. And uh, so like that, uh, things will be built, you see. Things will come. And yesterday, as I was sitting here, we don't, don't ask too much. I ask sometimes, are you really serious? Sometimes the situation is so intriguing and we don't feel, we, we feel almost lost and then, then I said, are you really serious? Do you mean to do something for us? Now you are there and things are so much, you see, confused here and whether there is yoga or whether there is ashram or this or that. Are you really serious? And I... I get the reply from the mother also. That if, if we are not serious, who else is serious? And we can do things. You see. That is, that is what we can do after the mother leaving her body. You see, it is a tremendous, you see, growth in their working. You see. What I I can tell you? What you used to experience only on the darshan day, four times in the day. Now that experience, that working. Is a, is a daily affair, you see. You have not to wait for the darshan days when you meet the master. What he used to get or what he used to, he used to do, he is doing that every day. Yes, we had, it was, we were meeting the mother, but only we, it was a very organized meeting, you write and you are given the time, only a little. But now the mother's presence and her contact, it's a continuous work. So that way the work has progressed and uh, we are in the direct working of that. That the force concentrates and uh, what I felt yesterday, and I think we should feel, feel something more, that we are taken to the point where the divine will itself is working. How the divine will is working? What is he doing? What is Sri Arvinda doing? What is the mother doing? And how they are doing it? How, how Sri Arvind, what did he, what did he do when he was giving the darshan? I hardly put the question, I put the question that what is it you are doing this, by this darshan? And I got that reply. Just a fraction of a question and the reply was that what is it? And just a, a sovereign gesture as it were. He just is extending, oh it is this thing, that I am giving you the whole the cosmos. And here with the whole cosmic consciousness. Even it is not an adequate formation of that experience. But uh, what happened actually at the darshan time? Then those things which we did not come to in our, you see, uh, horizon, this is, this is what happened. And this is what is happened. He was not simply sitting, a great force was getting concentrated in him and was passed on to us, passed on to us. That is what is being given. This is what I have been doing. So that whole force is concentrated, all the transcendental reality is just there, there. He, it comes like that upon him and through him it is passed on, it is established on earth. So, a very funny idea came to me that, oh, we are having Sri Aurobindo and uh, we have to turn away from him. Turn away. What does it do? He said, yes, I am continuing to look at your back, you see. Are we moving away from them? We have to go like that and come out. No, I know he is looking at me. Even when I, my back, he is looking at my back, you see. He looked at my face, we met face to face. Only... It is not only then that we receive, and then even we, we are away from him. Oh, then he will go away, away, away from me. I will go on looking you at your back, from your back. And then you will turn your face sometime and come to me, and the circle will be completed. And then the next question is, when will that circuit will be? Is it again a repetition? So perhaps is when you are fully, you will come to me in the realized way, you see. Fully realized being and 
and uh, as is, there will be no difference between you and me, you see. That is the point. When he goes back to Sri Aurobindo, he will have transformed us into his image. So, that is a... Uh, now, we shall read a few lines from Savitri. And these are infinite things and we can go on talking, but we shall do a little. So, a little water can be helpful. This is a passage from the third book in the third canto, about sixty lines. And this is the, the canto is named as the house of the spirit and the new creation. So this is an epic, you see, and epics are always centered around some great struggle and they, they are great heroes and they fight great battles and great, great problems are there and great things are at stake and almost the world's destiny is at stake and then this heroic struggle takes place and here in this yoga the things are not less heroic, you see, it demands a very, very great struggle. So, out of the sixty lines, yeah, we shall read from here and there. A mightier task remains than all he had done. He had done a very many great things. But still a greater, a mightier task remains. To that he turns, from which all being comes. To that, from which all being <coughs> comes, he turns. A sign attending from the secrecy, which knows the truth uncrafted <coughs> behind our thoughts, and guards the world with its all-seeing gaze. There is the truth that guards, to that he turns. How does he do it? This is very interesting. In the unapproachable stillness of his soul, you see, that he has achieved, the stillness of his soul. Absolutely still inside, intense, one-pointed, this is a description of our sadhana, how things happen in us. Intense, one-pointed, monumental, lone, Patient, he sat like an incarnate hope, motionless on a pedestal of prayer. It is like What is a pedestal? One great yogi is sitting, but what is a pedestal? Pedestal of prayer. And you see, there is a very clear picture. Pointed, just like a temple. One pointed, monumental, lone, patient, he sat like an incarnate hope. There is no depression. Of pessimism, incarnate hope, motionless on a pedestal of prayer. Why? Why? What does he want now, you see? He has achieved his stillness, his Brahmic consciousness is there, but a strength he sought that was not yet on earth. This is what we have been talking. What does, what is there in the one? This is the autobiography now. A strength he sought that was not yet on earth, held from a power too great for mortal will, you see. It helps from a power, a power is to be there. The light of our truth 
Now only seen as far. We have seen the truth, but only that as far. Light of our truth is sanctioned from this high, omnipotent source. His own source is there, it is high, omnipotent. But there is a sanction to be there. Yes, my dear, we are Hindu, you go to it. He wanted still a sanction. But he wants what happened. But from the appalling height, there stood no one. You want, yes, we want sadhana, this, this, that, but no wife was there. No, there took no wife. The timeless lips were closed, you see. The lips are there, timeless and closed. No opening came. The lips are not opening. A neutral, helpless void oppressed the ears. That is what we have. Nothing is taking place in the sadhana, nothing is happening. Everybody has to complain. And Sri Aurobindo himself that for years nothing happened. Neutral, helpless void oppressed the years. And now what is to be done? That is why it's the difficulty. So he says the difficulty will be still there in him, in the down, at the down bottom. In the texture of our bound humanity, he felt the sharp resistance, huge and dumb, of our inconscience an unseen day. There we meet it. What is the struggle? That in the very base of earth, you see, texture of our bound humanity, as it is made, he faced the stark resistance, very strong, huge and dumb. He does not see, but it resists of our inconscient and unseen day. The stubborn, mute rejection in life's depth, the very depth of life, there is a rejection. We don't want this. We don't want the divine. We don't want the light. The stubborn, mute rejection in life, that the ignorant no in the origin of things. There is a no, no, nothing, nothing. So he is meeting that. A way in collaboration with the night, you see. There is a collaboration. It is not that we, we, we cooperate with the night. Collaboration, not cooperate. Collab- yes, we join hands with the night. Even he himself survived and hid from his view. Even in him there was this collaboration and hidden from his view. Oh, we are saying we are good people and doing this, but no, they are maybe hidden from his own, our own view. Still something in his earthly being kept his kinship with the inconscient when it came. Even when he was advanced so much, almost in Brahmic consciousness, something was kept his kinship from when it came. A shadowy unity with a vanished past. Past is vanished. But we are still united with it. No. Oh, we have left behind the whole world. No. There is a shadowy, there is a very clear uh, figuring of the case. A shadowy unity with a vanished past, treasured in an old world frame, was lurking there. The old world frame is there, things are treasured, so our family is there, this thing is there, business is there. So we have, that is that secret. Unnoted by the illumined mind. Your mind is highly illumined. You can talk and talk about yoga, but this thing is there. Unnoted, you see. What is it? Unnoted. It's a frank auditing, you see. <laughs> the David side, you see. Un- unnoted by the illumined mind. And in subconscious whispers and in dreams, still murmured at the mind and spirit child. Your mind has chosen. Your spirit has chosen. But there is still something murmuring. In subconscious whispers and in dreams, still murmured, why have you chosen? Why have you done this yoga? It treacherous elements spread like slippery grains, you see, when you slip. In treacherous, it treacherous elements, hoping the incoming truth might stumble and fall, you see. <laughs> there are the stories of that grains, you know, this, where they are yeah, simply absorbed. Hoping the incoming truth might stumble. Oh, the issue will be finished. Some of our pretty territory, the whole ashram will collapse, you see. They want this ashram to collapse in these few days, yes. So it might stumble and fall. And old ideal voices wandering moan and pleaded for a heavenly leniency to the gracious imperfections of our earth. There are ideal voices also. We have our ideal, old ideal voices wandering moan. Oh, nothing happening to our old uh, ideals. Moaned and pleaded for a heavenly leniency. Let the divine grant our ideals. Heavenly leniencies to the gracious imperfections of our earth and the sweet weaknesses of our mortal state. Yes. Yes. Allow it. <laughs> this now we will to discover and exile. Now the heroic struggle. Oh, all this we will to discover 
He has not yet discovered. So we have the poet has discovered that these things are there. These things he will to discover. Oh, what is there? This something is there. And exile. The element in him betraying God. You see, the issue is clean. What is it that betrays God in us? The element in him betraying God. Or now, and what does he do? The terrific thing that is. For all nature's recondite faces were stripped bare. You see, the secret faces of nature is stripping bare, mercilessly. All her dim crypts, secret places, and corners searched with fire, where refugee instinct and unshaped rewards could shelter find in darkness its sanctuary against the white purity of heaven's cleansing flame. The heaven's cleansing flame is there, but these things, this uh, refugee instinct, unshaped rewards, rewards are there, but they are unshaped. Unshaped rewards could shelter find, could find their shelter. All seem to have perished that was undivine. So what was undivine? All seem to have perished. It worked out that everything is perished. Yet some minutest dissidents might escape. Now clear the whole ground. But still, you see, these terrible things are happening. Yet, uh, yet some minutest dissidents might escape and still a center lurk of the blind force. Somewhere a center may be there. For why? Why it can happen? Can that be their perfection? No, it is. For the inconscient too is infinite. As there is a superconscious infinite, here you cannot exhaust it that everything is done. No. The more its abilities we insist to sound, the more it stretches, stretches endlessly. If you let us exhaust this much darkness, no, no, it stretches, stretches, stretches endlessly. So what is to be done? So here is an operation taking place. Then, let the human cry should spoil the truth. So what is the, what will be the, the danger that a human cry should spoil the truth? The truth is coming, but a human cry might arise, oh, something, a human cry, and the truth will destroy you. It will be spoiled if the possibility of a cry is there. So, let, then let the human cry, which is quite acceptable on the human level, that human has a right to cry. But human cry should point the truth. He tore desire up from its bleeding root and offered to the God the vacant place. This is the operation he takes up. So the human cry may arise, but from where it will arise? From desire. The desire, you don't know where the desire is hidden. So, let the human cry should spoil the truth. He tore desire up from its bleeding root. Then it's saying out, it's all bleeding, 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 you see. From its bleeding root. And the vacant place is created. Absolutely, that there is no desire at all, you see. It is there, put out, put aside. It is bleeding root. Yes, it is there, bleeding, you see. What a great thing is there to pass from the desire. Desire and offer to the God the vacant place. Here, now the God can come here. So now there is no desire, let the God occupy this second place and offer you. Here it is. This is the greatest battle awaiting for everyone. Thus could he bear the touch immaculate. Only in this way, the immaculate, the purest, the greatest touch could come to us. The last and mightiest transformation came. After this, the last transformation of Aswapati. He has passed through all the worlds, you see, and made the divine, but the transformation was not yet there. You can see the divine. Somebody asked, I want to see God. So you know, ask him, why? Why do you want to see the God? Something must happen, you see, after seeing the God. So, what is to happen? So, the last, the last and mightiest transformation came. Can we go on or? Read it in Not all. You may read it again at leisure. The last and mightiest transformation came. What happened? His soul was all in front. Like a great sea. The soul, all the soul is in, all in front. Flooding the mind and body with its waves. That is the experience. That soul, our mind and body, flooding the mind and body with its waves. This being prayed to embrace the universe. This is the experience you get at the very first step. You sit down to meditate and your being is there, spreading out. This being 
great to embrace the universe united within and the without that when i did to make of life a cosmic harmony a cosmic harmony that within and without are united and there is no more struggle an empire of the immanent divine that is he becomes a divine an empire of the immanent divine divine not transcendental it is here in this tremendous universality not only his soul nature and mind sense included every soul and mind in this in the soul with the soul you can include soul nature mind sense but even the life of flesh and nerve was changed even that the life of flesh and nerve was changed and grew one flesh and nerve with all that lives we are united with all that lives we felt the joy of others as his joy people say that is difficult to see these are the simplest lines he felt the joy of others as his joy he bore the grief of others as his grief his universal sympathy up bore in winds like ocean the creation flowed as all up there all being sacrificed see how great jackson is there his universal sympathy the up bore the creation flowed the whole creation flowed you can up there as the earth up there all being sacrificed not being only the sacrifice of us the earth up there thrilled with the hidden transcendence joy and peace the hidden transcendence that joy and peace is there there was no more division endless crawl one grew the spirit secret unity all nature felt again the single bliss that the single bliss and you feel all nature there there was no cleavage between soul and soul no cleavage there was no barrier between world and god it's not a brahma satyam that can miss no barrier between world and god overpowered where form and memory is limiting line is it form is there memory is line is there limiting line it is overpowered the covering mind was seized and torn apart my mind is very simple to read it how how it would be difficult it is very smooth you can read out if you like it was the fall and now no more could be the covering mind you see and as i pass in this part i am i am undergoing this attack of the mind you see and absolutely thrown into my and then so helpless and then gone this thing and all the experiences that i say you have to understand experience the attack of mind how you are attacked the covering mind was seized and torn apart it was dissolved and now no more could be the one consciousness that made the world was seen this is the point that i was just taking into that experience the one consciousness that made the world how the divine is making the world at every minute of creation is taking place and what is actually taking place so that was seen all now was luminosity and space all is light all is form above in its last thin fainting place the circle of the little self was gone now the circle of the little self it is absurd it is abolished Abolish in its last thin fainting trace. The self is there. It is gone. It is gone. But even the last fainting trace is there. Even that is abolished. The separate being could no more be felt. You cannot see yourself separate. It disappeared and knew itself no more. There is no more the separate being. Lost in the spirit's wide identity. There it disappeared. Lost in the spirit's wide identity. It later grew a movement of the all. It is not your personal movement of the all. Exploring itself to find that all was He. It explored all is He. All was He. His soul was the delegation of the all. What is you? What is yourself? Delegation of the all that turned from itself to join the one supreme. This all turned from itself. His soul turned from itself to join the one supreme. Transcended was the human formula. That is what we are saying. The human formula. We have transcended. Man's heart that has obscured inviolable assumed the mighty beating of a god. This is the realization of what will happen to our heart. Man's heart that has obscured inviolable assumed the mighty beating of a god. It's the god's heart beating. This beating mind seemed in the truth that knows. There is a truth that knows. His mind is there. His life was a flow of the universal life. The whole life, universal, just flowed through us. He took for fulfilled on the world's high, highest line, awaiting the ascent beyond the world. He was reaching the top. 
the world's highest line possible in which in which this truth fulfills awaiting the essence beyond the world. You have to go beyond the world now. You have to come to the top of the world. Just in that not one day, one step and all is sky and God. You reach that, that one step more and all is sky and God. Awaiting the essence. Not only awaiting the essence beyond the God, awaiting the descent, the world to say. You have to await the descent also that something will come down. Why? To save the world. Awaiting the descent, the world to save. A splendor and a symbol wrapped the earth. That is what has happened after the realization. It is a splendor and a symbol wrapped the earth. Human epiphanies looked and hallowed vast, surrounded it. The vast, which are the surrounded, wild infinity, were closed and bright remoteness leaned near and thin. Thin, 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 far and far, it comes near, leaned near and thin, then it failed in that tremendous distance. That is what I was thinking, that we must meditate on this line. Take one line, this vast remote, remote bright uh, remoteness is leaned near, bright remote, remoteness. What is it? You can take one line and just meditate. Bright remoteness is leaned near and thin, then failed in the tremendous, in that tremendous distance. Ephemeral voices from its hearing fell. Ephemeral ordinary sleeping voices fell from its hearing. And thought potent no more sank large. And thought potent no more sank large and fell like a tired god into mysterious sea. Then what happens to the thought potent no more? So far the thought has been very powerful. But now it is no more potent. It sank like what? Sank large and fell. It is a large thought when you have all these things you say. It is large and fell. A very wonderful simile, like a tired god into the genius species. Our thought is almost like a god, but his labor of the god itself is tired. All right, go down with it. Like a tired god into the genius species. It is so very genius and clear. The roast of mortal thinking just cast down. They are thinking the mortal roast, they are roast, throw it down. The roast of mortal thinking were cast down, leaving his knowledge bare to absolute size. You can raise the knowledge. Leaving his knowledge bare to absolute sight. So there is a sight. You can see things. You are not to think. The sea is there. To absolute sight. There is driving sea and nature sleepless. Sir, this is the nature sleep. Nature is spurring us without any sleep. Nature sleepless. Sir, fate driving. It's all too dangerous. The fate is driving the whole creation. And a very powerful lines here are using. Fate driving sea and nature sleepless. Sir, the ethnic beings of the world were seen in the only person on the living sea. And the world is there and now it's a terrific thing. And it is like an ethnic living at the Ram Murti, trying to take care of this. So the ethnic beings of the world were seen in the no more this world is known. They are seen in the only person on the living sea. There is no moment of the world. Life in his members, lower down, vast and more. His life in his members, his whole, his whole body, it is it just lay down vast and life is not dead, just is resting. Life in his members lay down vast and mute. Naked, unwalled, unsurified, it bore the immense reserves of the mortality. The life is dead, but what? It is naked, there is no covering of it. Unwalled, there are no walls. Unterrified, it is not also terrified also, otherwise it just lost, comes nearly simply lost. Unterrified, it bore the immense regards of immortality. That is not life and immortality, life is death. So the immortality regards it, the immense regards, it bore the, the last moment of all. So all these moments of the will, the mind, heart, life, the last moment died, and all at once grew still. Supreme experience. All at once grew still. The belief that was the unseen transcendent hand laid on his limbs, the spirit measureless seed, infinity, swallowed him into darkness time. This is the last line. What happened? All was all at once grew to, not step by step, at once. This is the experience that something happens, another comes on the terrain, and all at once grows still. Something that stillness simply takes it up. So here we a weight, what was that? A weight that was the unseen transcendent hand, you see. The unseen transcendent, this transcendent is a big thing in the yoga. The, and it is not seen, but this hand is there. The unseen transcendent hand, that was the weight. A weight that was the unseen transcendent hand, laid on his limbs the spirit measureless seed. 